Hey Kyle, I opened up your box this morning with the pump valve body and the uh, Sonics HD 23 shift valve in it. And unfortunately, this is really the only part that I can use here. Um, the valve body, when I pulled it out of the box, had the manual valve pretty much jammed, cocked sideways into the bore here. And as you can see, it'll only go in part way because the manual valve is bent. So. We need a new manual valve and I really don't want to use this casting because there's a risk that it has been opened up here in a way that it, you know, um, would render it uh, not serviceable. Uh, you would have cross leaks, potential for delayed engagements and drive and other range positions because somewhere between here and here, um, it got horribly jammed up and it took me, you know, some effort, if you will, to pull it out of the board. So I have another good use valve body here, the same vintage. And this is kind of how the manual valve should move in and out of the bore, you know, nice and easy. So we'll go ahead and build on this one, and that should be fine. This one is uh, basically scrap at this point. All right, then for the pump, um, I think you told me that this was remanufactured. Unfortunately, there's a big old crack right here on the pump body, so the pump body half of this is no good, uh, despite the, the gray paint job. And then... Just looking at the rest of it, I see that none of the bushings are replaced, neither the forward or rear bushing, and this one's particularly worn and probably caused trouble code P1870 converter clutch slippage if it were to be used like that. So anyway, assuming that the, not, there's nothing catastrophically wrong with the stator support itself, we can remachine that. The splines here actually look pretty good, but... I'll give you a price on a new stator shaft, just so you have it. If you want, we can install a new shaft, but I'll need to do that before I take the stator support itself to be resurfaced. So anyway, just wanted to brief you on what I found. So I took apart the pump halves, and we can see a lot of scoring here on the stator support working surface where the rotor and slide kind of more or less go. Uh, and here is the rotor and slide in the pump body. So take a rotor out real quick and it looks like someone did, you know, put this together. Got assembly lube here. And I'm looking at the veins and these veins are used. I mean, a set of veins for a 13 vein pump is like literally $6 or $7, but somebody reused pump veins. So if this was truly a remanufactured pump, they did a piss poor job just from what I'm seeing. And while the crack on the flange here on the pump body may have occurred in shipping, I don't know, it actually doesn't look like it to me. It looks like it was like that, you know, when this thing was put together by whoever remanufactured it. Uh, they did use a Sonics bushing, which I'm gonna use one as well. Uh, these are Teflon coated bushings that Sonics makes. They're very good bushings. Um, but uh, anyway, just a cursory inspection of this thing tells me that there's a lot more work to be done. And at least insofar as the stator support is concerned, the body is no good as you saw earlier. Now that we have the rotor and slide and everything else out of the way, we can take a quick look at the working surface here on the uh, pump body. And we see, wipe it off a little bit. We see that we have a lot of witness marks, a lot of wear, and so this was not uh, milled either. So the procedure for remanufacturing a pump body is to place this casting into a vertical mill and remove 10 thousandths off the deck and 10 thousandths off the pocket. And then um, as you're getting down to that roughly 10 thousandths depth, you start to kind of take your rotor and your slide, just the rotor and the slide by themselves, no support O-ring or support on the slide, and no rotor guide or veins on the rotor. Just put them in there and start doing uh, clearance measurements between the top of the rotor and slide and the deck surface that you just milled with a precision straight edge and, you know, roughly... I want to say 0.1 or, excuse me, 0.001 to... Um, 0.002 feeler gauges to see if you are um, within the spec. And your first pass, you're probably not going to be. There's probably not going to be any room there 
then you finish mill it down to that final one to two thou that you need and check it again. And you should be right where you need to be. The spec for the rotor to deck is uh, one to one and a half thousandths. The spec from the slide surface to the deck is one to two thousandths. Though I've uh, read from Dana over at ProBuilt Automatics, he actually likes anywhere from between two and three thousandths for high RPM applications to give a little bit more breathing room between the castings and the rotor and slides. So, um, you know, Dana is one of the most foremost and renowned experts on these transmissions and 700 R4s. So, you know, anything that he says, it's, you know, worth considering. Anyway, that's the pump body. And again, for something that was supposedly remanufactured, this is anything but, I mean, this, this pump is a disaster. All right, now we're gonna preliminarily test the stator support for sealing integrity in the valve train. So we're obviously using the Sonic's vacuum tester to do that. And what we wanna do is first test the pressure regulator valve. And to do that, what you need to do is make sure you have access to a little orifice there in the valve itself so you can plug with a pencil eraser and then go ahead and put your test block and gasket here like so, and then go ahead and test it. So we'll do that and then I wanna test the lockup valve and I'll show you how to do that once we're done with this. All right, so this valve is pulling about four inches of vacuum as you can see, which is a good sign. It tells me that this is probably, you know, giving me, I would say at least 15 inches, but let's see if I'm correct or not. Nope, I'm wrong. <laughs> so it's actually giving me, looks like, looks like 13 inches of vacuum. So 13 inches of vacuum is redeemable via Transgo drop-in pressure regulator valve. It is approximately three or four ten thousandths or so wider on the balance spool end than the factory valve. And that should be enough to close the gap and get us to where we're about 15 to maybe upwards of 17 or 18 inches of vacuum, which is the signal threshold or range we want to be in. All right, now we'll go ahead and we'll test the lockup valve. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and put our gasket with the little test port right over that orifice. And then we're gonna put the block over it. Now you're gonna see that we're only gonna pull about 10 or 11 inches of vacuum to start. So we have to take a finger, push the valve in and seal up the bore here. You know, push it in to where it's in its working position and that's giving us 20 inches of vacuum. So that's good signal. So you always wanna do this kind of stuff before you take the stator support and or um, any inspections you might be doing with the pump body to the machinist for work. Uh, you don't wanna spend you know, 50 or 60 bucks resurfacing a stator support when you're not gonna be able to rehabilitate it or it requires um, boring and reaming, which I mean, I have those tools, but most do-it-yourselfers are not going to spend the ridiculous amount of money that Sonic's reamers cost because you're not going to be doing this stuff all the time. So um, I strongly recommend you do invest in some sort of vacuum test equipment or take your castings to a transmission shop, you know, for the valve body and the stator support and have them vacuum test it so that you can confirm or deny that it's even worth um, doing anything further with those particular castings or if it's better to just go find other ones that are a little bit more serviceable and have more potential. One other potential problem is going to be the fitment between the stator and stator support. As you can see, it's not perfect. It's not flush. Uh, the stator support is not flush with the stator uh, casting there. There's a gap. So basically, this stator support is going to have to be removed and the area here examined and then repressed back in. So at this point, I'm probably just going to have him put a new stator in there because while this one appears to be in decent shape, I mean, you know, you can clean this journal up with a little sandpaper. I'm not exactly sure if this, the flange, is, you know, perfectly true and flush or capable of being mated correctly to the stator support. So either that or whoever did this did a completely half-assed job. And so this has to be taken out, both of these parts examined, 
and more than likely we'll just put a new stator shaft in here if the casting, the stator support itself, is in good serviceable condition. All right, first thing we need to do is just remove these three bolts. So I'm gonna be using Torx 30, or sorry, Torx 27. Okay, that one was loose. Alright, now what I'm doing is just checking to make sure that I can't simply remove the stator from the stator support by hand. I mean, that would indicate that this casting is no longer any good. You know, it would be completely shot. So now we got to press the stator shaft out and inspect the stator support to see if there's anything visually anyway that we can determine uh, and see that would lead us to believe that the stator support itself is no good. Like I said, I'm probably just going to have him replace the stator shaft with a brand new one. Uh, that would make it nice and neat. And then once the new shaft is installed, we'll go ahead and take this to the machine shop so that the machinist can resurface it. All right, let's bring this back to the bench. It's kind of hard to see. Um, plus, I don't have any shop towels over here, but what I'm gonna be looking for is any kind of imperfections, any ridges or other issues that would lead me to believe that this casting cannot be reused. So like I said, the stator shaft itself appears to be in decent shape. So I'm gonna give the customer the option to reuse this one, clean up these journals and rebush it, or just simply purchase a brand new one. And we got a little bit of what appears to be surface rust down here. This is no big deal. The splines themselves appear to be okay, a bit, maybe a little worn here on the crest. So my recommendation for him is going to be to uh, go ahead and just replace this thing. So. Now let's look at the stator support. Okay, from what I'm seeing, I don't, I don't see anything that overly concerns me. Um, at least not so far. The alignment dial's in here pretty good, and that really shouldn't be. Actually, you know what? I take that back. It looks like somebody crushed the alignment dial into the support and they had this misaligned and that's why the stator is cockeyed. So I spoke too soon once again, but you know, it always helps to thoroughly scrutinize these parts before you make a, a decision about whether or not they could be reused. But unfortunately, <laughs> he's gonna need an entirely new pump assembly. So, um, he has a, a 2008 um, Colorado, but it's LS swapped, and he's using a Terminator X to control the transmission, um, you know, and manage, I think, everything about the engine. So he's not going to need, as far as I know, I'm going to confirm this with him, he's not going to need a turbine speed sensor shaft compatible pump and um, input drums. He's not working with a turbine speed sensor in his uh, shift and or control strategy for you know, for that vehicle. So anyway, um, yeah, this, uh, again, I'll, I'll confirm with him, but 
I'm almost positive he told me this was a remanufactured pump that he had acquired. And so whoever, uh, either shop or company that did the remanufacturing, I mean, they did basically a no job. There, it's worse than a no job. I mean, this is, I mean, this is basic. You just simply align um, the alignment dowel port using a long drift start pressing in the stator, you know, part way until you know it's perfectly aligned and you can move that drift up and down. And you want something that's the same diameter as this, so it basically serves as a gauge, if you will. And then once you've confirmed that this is more or less aligned and all the bolt holes are aligned, you proceed to press the stator all the way into the stator support and be done with it. And then you, you know, install your three bolts and you torque them down to anywhere from like I want to say the spec is 75 to 90 inch pounds. I always typically do about 80 inch pounds on those. And that should be it. But of the parts that he sent to me, the pump, the valve body, and the Sonics Heavy Duty 3-2 shift valve or 2-3 shift valve, that Sonics valve is the only thing I can use from, uh, you know, from this box of parts. I have to source him a new valve body casting, which I have. It's right over there on the bench and then I also have to dig up an entirely new pump assembly for him which I believe I have one so if I do then I'll just sell him that and we'll build on that all right uh, that's the video hope this was informative or educational or if nothing else entertaining for you um, the takeaway here is that you really need to take apart remanufactured pumps and carefully scrutinize them for any problems, defects, issues, etc., before you just simply install uh, that pump into your transmission. So my recommendation is to find a competent machinist in your area, if you're not one yourself, that can resurface the stator support, mill the pump body, and then um, possibly ream the um, pressure regulator valve area for an oversized valve if that's what it needs as well, especially if you're doing something performance, which this vehicle is used in kind of a, a pre-runner, um, you know, Baja racing off-roading type uh, use case. So, you know, it's going to see some intense action and transmission is going to have to be beefed up accordingly. Now, I'm not building the transmission itself. I'm just doing the valve body and the pump. So I'll advise and counsel him on what he needs to do with the rest of the transmission if he's not already you know, kind of set up for what he's trying to accomplish and, you know, um, the usage and intended plans for the vehicle and all that stuff. So anyway, guys, sorry to be long-winded there, but like I said, just wanted to show you what you're up against when you're purchasing reman pumps. So at least you're, you know, forewarned and forewarned is forearmed.